Hello there again. Welcome to number 25. Are you ready? We're going to move through this one quickly, or I'm going to be late for a meeting. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> but I think that's fine because it's not a very long one. So the question for today is, do we listen to our modern Moses or our modern Moseses, as it may be? Um, so in this section, we're going to see Lehi's blessing to his son, Joseph. Um, okay, let's just move right on in. So verse one. Um, so this is Lehi speaking. We're kind of, it's almost sort of mid-sentence in the way that the chapters have been broken up. He just got through speaking um, to the, the group, to Laman and Lemuel, um, as kind of a group in their families. And now I speak unto you, Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry. He was speaking to Jacob, his previous, his firstborn in the wilderness, Jacob. Now he's moving on to Joseph, his lastborn. <clears throat> and now I speak unto you, Joseph, my lastborn. Thou wast born in the wilderness of mine afflictions, yea, in the days of my greatest sorrow did thy mother bear thee. Interesting that he would comment on that and, and to think about uh, that life goes on and families grow even in our times of greatest sorrow or affliction. Um, and may the Lord consecrate also unto thee this land, which is a most precious land for thine inheritance and the inheritance of thy seed with thy brethren for thy security, uh, for thy security forever. Um, if you'll recall, he, he did comment to Jacob that uh, safety would come as he would stay with his brother Nephi. If it so be that ye shall keep the commandments of the Holy One of Israel. So there's always that condition, right? Here's your promised land, but you have to uh, keep the commandments. And now, Joseph, my lastborn, whom I have brought out of the wilderness of mine afflictions, may the Lord bless thee forever, for thy seed shall not utterly be destroyed. That's a very interesting promise. Um, and he didn't stick an if on that one. And I think in that case, he was prophesying that in the case of Joseph, there will be some left, um, whereas that's not the case with everybody, right? For behold, thou art the fruit of my loins, and I am a descendant of Joseph, who was carried captive into Egypt. Okay, from the Old Testament. And great were the covenants of the Lord, which he made unto Joseph. Wherefore, Joseph truly saw our day, and he obtained a promise of the Lord, that out of the fruit of his loins, the Lord God would raise up a righteous branch unto the house of Israel, not the Messiah, but a branch which was to be broken off. Nevertheless, to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord, that the Messiah should be made manifest unto them in the latter days, meaning today, in the spirit of power, unto the bringing of them, meaning, so there's going to be a lot of pronouns in here, we got to keep track of them, uh, bringing them, being Lehi's family, uh, out of darkness unto light, yea, out of hidden darkness, and out of captivity unto freedom. Okay, and there again is, we're talking about captivity of ignorance, right, unto the freedom <clears throat> of understanding um, the Lord and, and the covenants, and how to... Um, how to be free and prosperous. Uh, okay, now, so, and as we, we're about to jump in here, we're going to, it's going to be, we're going to have to keep track of who's talking and what are they talking about. For Joseph of Egypt truly testified, saying, so now this is Joseph speaking. Uh, sorry, I made a lot of Joseph's words a different color later, and I didn't catch these ones. Joseph speaking, a seer shall the Lord my God raise up, meaning a prophet, right? who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins. Yea, Joseph truly said, Thus saith the Lord unto me. Okay, so what's coming next is the Lord speaking, as quoted by Jake, uh, Joseph of Egypt, as quoted by Lehi. You, you good? <laughs> a choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins. Oh, as quoted by Greg. Well, as read by... A choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be esteemed highly among the fruit of thy loins. And unto him will I give commandment that he shall do a work for the fruit of thy loins, his brethren, which shall be of great worth unto them, even to the bringing of them to the knowledge of the covenants which I made with thy fathers. Okay, we good so far? And I will give unto him... The, the seer, a commandment that he shall do none other work save the work which I shall command him. And I will make him great in mine eyes, for he shall do my work. Okay. And he shall be great like unto Moses. 
Now, keep, keep track. Here is the Lord speaking to Jacob, uh, to Joseph of Egypt, comparing this future seer to Moses. By the way, keep, it, keep in mind, Moses hadn't been born yet, right? Moses was far in the future after Jacob, uh, Joseph. <laughs> he shall be great like unto Moses, whom I have said I would raise up unto you to deliver my people, O house of Israel. And Moses will I raise up to deliver thy people out of the land of Egypt. See, so he's speaking in the future, Joseph's future. But a seer, so now he's referring back to this other future seer. But a seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth of my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them. So he, see, he's talking about a different word. Um, because his word will have already gone forth among them, them being the, the descendants of Lehi, this broken off branch. And that word already, that they have already received is, is the Christian Bible, right? Um, and so this additional word that this future seer will bring forth, of course, will be the Book of Mormon, additional word. And that between the two, it will be the Book of Mormon that will convince them, right? Wherefore, the fruit of thy loins shall write... And the fruit of the loins of Judah, so does this sound familiar? This sounds like um, Isaiah's words that we got earlier. The fruit of the loins of Judah shall write, and that which shall be written by the fruit of thy loins, and also that which shall be written by the fruit of the loins of Judah, shall grow together. I like that he used the word grow. They, they don't just like go ping, but this thing is going to develop over the future, and they will come together more and more. Not that the words change, I think, but that our understanding of uh, the togetherness of them will increase over time. <clears throat> under the conf confounding of false doctrines and laying down of contentions and establishing peace among the fruit of thy loins. Some of this is, I think, yet to be fulfilled. Um, and bringing them to the knowledge of their fathers in the latter days, and also to the knowledge of my covenants, saith the Lord. And out of weakness he shall be made strong in that day when my work shall commence among all my people, unto the restoring thee, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. And that see, now is now's what I figured out the whole, hey, let's make it a different color thing. Sorry. And thus prophesied Joseph, saying, Behold, that seer, uh, that seer will the Lord bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. Were there people who were seeking to destroy this future seer? Uh, absolutely. Uh, they, they that seek to, to destroy him shall be confounded, for this promise which I have obtained of the Lord of the fruit of my loins shall be fulfilled. Behold, I am sure of the fulfilling of this promise. It's interesting, and he repeats this later, that he's sure of the fulfilling. And his name shall be called after me, Joseph, and it shall be after the name of his father, Joseph. So there's a, it, it does it get any more specific than that? So he's talking about a future, future person in the latter days, a, a choice seer who will be raised up, and he's described him in many ways, and that this choice seer, his name will be Joseph, and that he will have been called after the name of his father, Joseph. Um, and so, boy, if there was ever any question or any doubt, we certainly know um, who it is now. And he shall be like unto me, for the thing which the Lord shall bring forth by his hand, by the power of the Lord, shall bring my people unto salvation. Yea, thus prophesied Joseph, I am sure of this thing, even as I am sure of the promise of Moses. For the Lord hath said unto me, I will preserve thy seed forever. And the Lord hath said, I will raise up a Moses, and I will give power unto him in a rod. Right? We, we remember, if nothing else, you've watched the movie, right? With uh, the rod and throws it down, and there's, he does all sorts of different things with it. Um, uh, and I will give judgment unto him in writing. Right? Well, where do the first five books of the Old Testament come from? From Moses. Moses' writing. So Moses was, he, he's, his writings were responsible for so much of what we have. Yet I will not loose his tongue, that he shall speak much, for I will not make him mighty in speaking. Now, that really wasn't in the movie, was it? Old Cecil, Cecil B. let us down on that one. But I will write unto him my law by the finger of mine own hand, and... I will make a spokesman for him. So who was that spokesman? Well, that was Aaron, right? Um, 
Aaron was the spokesman for Moses. We don't know exactly, did Moses, he, he, he didn't speak much. Did he have a speech impediment or something? We don't really know, but Aaron did most of the talking for, for Moses. So aren't we glad for Aaron? And the Lord said unto me also, I will raise up unto the fruit of thy loins, and I will make for him a spokesman. So now he's talking about Joseph um, of the future and that Joseph would have a spokesman. Now listen to this. Uh, and I, behold, I will give unto him that he shall write the writings of the fruit of thy loins. So you see, he's not going to write just off the top of his head. He's going to write the writings of the of the fruit of thy loins, of, of the people of, of Joseph, or in, in other words, the Book of Mormon. Unto the fruit of thy loins. So he's going to write the writings of the fruit of thy loins, and it will be you know, presented to the fruit of thy loins. So the, the people of Lehi during their life, and then the remnants of the people of Lehi will receive this. Ooh, and I got to go. <laughs> uh, and the words which he shall write shall be the words which are expedient in my wisdom should go forth unto the fruit of thy loins. And it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins had cried unto them from the dust, for I know their face. See, this is very similar writing um, to what um, was spoken in Isaiah. But, so it, the Lord is saying here, that um, this future Joseph would have a spokesman that will help him write. So the spokesman will write the writings. Well, who were, who were the scribes? Did Joseph himself pen himself any of the Book of Mormon? No, he was the one speaking the words um, that were given to him, basically the translation. And so these four here, Martin Harris, Oliver Cowdery, John Whitmer, and Emma Smith, um, those four literally are the ones who wrote every word of the Book of Mormon, as it fell from the lips of the prophet Joseph. Um, and the words which he shall write shall be the words which are expedient in my wisdom, should go forth unto the fruit of thy loins, and it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins had cried unto them from the dust, for I know their faith. By the way, this um, what you see here on the background of this slide, this is literally um, the first page of, uh, I think it's the first page, of the printer's manuscript of the Book of Mormon that was written by Oliver Cowdery, who... Uh, a beautiful penmanship, by the way. And they shall cry from the dust, yea, even the re even repentance unto their brethren, even after many ge generations have gone by them. And it shall come to pass that their cry shall go even according to the simpleness of their words, because of their faith unto their words, uh, because of their faith, their words shall proceed, I'm sorry to add in words, proceed forth out of my mouth unto their brethren, who are the fruit of thy loins, and the weakness of their words will I make strong in their faith, unto the remembering of my covenant, which I made unto, my, unto thy fathers. Whew. So that's the Lord speaking to Joseph, um, etc. And now behold, so now we're back to Lehi. And now behold, my son Joseph, after this manner did my father of old prophesy. Wherefore, because of this covenant, thou art blessed, for thy seed shall not be destroyed, for they shall hearken unto the words of this book, of the book. And there shall rise up one mighty among them who shall do much good, both in word and in deed, being an instrument in the hands of God with exceeding faith to work mighty wonders and do that thing which is great in the sight of God unto the bringing to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel and unto the seed of thy brethren. So doesn't that perfectly describe um, the, the great work that Joseph did, which was Joseph of the latter days, which is the restoration. Um, and now, blessed art thou, Joseph, behold, thou art little, wherefore hearken unto the words of thy brother Nephi, and it shall be done unto thee, even according to the words which I have spoken. Remember the words of thy dying father. Amen. Isn't that interesting? Um, that's quite a load for someone who's little. We don't know how little is little, but little is probably fairly little. Anyways, um, it, we, we could spend an awful lot more time on this, um, but what a great prophecy. And imagine what Joseph Smith must have thought as he was reading this. Um, now remember, because of the last 116 pages, this wasn't, he didn't read this as early in the process as you might think. It was much later in the process, but to be reading through it and to see and to recognize, holy cow, that is completely me, and that's my dad, and, and wow, like that must have been super exciting. Anyways, so Joseph, Joseph of the latter days, Joseph Smith, is our modern Moses. Um, and, you know, if we suddenly received poof, this big collection of writings that were definitely from Moses of old, I'm certain that we would all sit up, the world would sit up and pay attention. Um, and, and so here we have 
a Moses, our own Moses, and you see that the Lord, in speaking with Joseph of old, put those two side by side, and he held them up as equals. Moses of the latter day, uh, of the former days, and and this this choice seer, and so if the Lord puts them side by side, then ought we not uh, to do the same? Um, and so the question for us then is, do we have the faith to allow the Lord to to make weak things become strong in us? Are we listening to the Mos to our modern Moses? Are we are we going humbly and following the teachings? And are we willing to allow, in spite of the weakness of of him and of them, of all of us together? Are we uh, allowing the Lord to work with us and to help us to become strong in spite of our weaknesses? Um, okay, so that's it for this one. Next, next up is, is an important one, 2 Nephi chapter 4. Lehi dies, huge, huge, huge turning point, and we get to um, experience Nephi's lament, uh, which is no small thing. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.